President Trump and Republicans are demanding Congressman Adam Schiff resign. The president slammed the House Intel Committee chief during his rally last night. Little pencil neck Adam Schiff. He's got the smallest, thinnest neck I've ever seen. He is not a long ball hitter. But I saw him today. Well, we don't really know. Uh, there could still have been some Russia collusion. <laughs> These are sick people. So, yeah, that, 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 I don't know. Pencil neck is what I have. It doesn't look like what Congressman Schiff has. Uh, well, we'll have to check our sources. <laughs> uh, the president and Republicans accused Congressman Schiff of pushing a, quote, false narrative of collusion amid special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. So for more on this, we want to bring in uh, CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe. He is joining us from Capitol Hill. So, Ed, listen, what... Schiff is saying, what Congressman Schiff is saying is nothing any different than what the other Democrats are saying. So why is the president and other Republicans signaling, sing, singling him out? Uh, part of the reason, Anne-Marie, I think, uh, whether the Republicans and the president will admit it or not, is that Schiff is a television fixture. He's appeared more than 34 times over the past two years on the Sunday morning political talk shows. He's omnipresent on daytime and late night and primetime talk shows and news shows. And who do we know happens to be a pretty frequent TV viewer? Well, the president. So he's seeing Congressman Schiff basically every day towing this line that the president did something wrong, his campaign did something wrong, there's collusion, there's obstruction of justice. So the president now, that the release valve can be uh, exposed, is, is now looking for political blood, basically. And at the top of that list is the guy he keeps seeing on the airwaves every day, Adam Schiff. And this is to be expected. We knew uh, almost immediately on Sunday when the attorney general's summary of the Mueller report came out, that the president was going to do something like this, and Schiff is certainly at the top of that list. It doesn't hurt that Kevin McCarthy in the House is also from California and goes to great lengths whenever he can to target his fellow Californians who happen to be Democrats. So he's happy to pick the fight as well. And look, the House Intelligence Committee is, is really just that in name only. It's otherwise just become a political playground. And, and a body that has had a real difficulty working amongst themselves uh, on some pretty serious policy issues over the past few years. Um, all right, Ed, so uh, staying on the Mueller report, Democrats are considering issuing a subpoena if Attorney General Barr doesn't meet their April 2nd deadline of releasing the full report. Uh, the full report is, by all reports out there, 300 plus pages, more, right. more than 300 pages. Yeah. We've only received a four page summary from the Attorney General. Uh, how likely is that to happen? There is concern, Vlad, that the Attorney General and the Justice Department ultimately will not cough up all of the report and all the underlying related documents. And so they are mulling a possible subpoena that they would issue as early as next Tuesday afternoon when they have asked that the report be submitted to Congress for its review. The problem, according to the Justice Department, is that they have to untangle a lot of grand jury testimony or information related to grand juries that may still actually be seated. Then there are concerns about potential classified information being in this report since it was ultimately about a national security issue. Now, you could turn around and say, as Speaker Pelosi did yesterday, you got plenty of people at the Justice Department. How come you can't have all of them hurry up and sort this out so that we can get the report as quickly as possible? That may be because the Justice Department wants to keep it to just a handful of people so it doesn't get exposed too widely. Uh, there may be other reasons behind it. But certainly, if you look at some polling that's come out this past week, there's evidence that most Americans want to see this thing. Uh, in the words of one person I spoke with this past week, they said, look, we paid for this. The American public deserves to see what exactly they were looking for and what they ultimately discovered, even if nobody else is going to be indicted. Well, the president may be one of those people because he said before that, you know, he really thinks that the report should be exactly. released. And he's certainly thankful the collusion delusion is done and over with. But uh, there are other investigations, some ongoing now, others perhaps yet to be started. Uh, one that's ongoing is the Senate Intelligence Committee. They actually called in his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, to speak to the lawmakers yesterday. Do you have any idea, uh, you know, what the committee's focusing on and why they wanted to talk to Kushner? 
We don't know why they wanted to talk to Jared Kushner. We do know that they are continuing their investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 elections. And that investigation is one of at least eight underway in the House and the Senate, looking at Russian interference, looking at the president, his campaign, his business interests, and other decisions made by the administration. And, and his sudden appearance yesterday that we didn't know about until a reporter spotted him leaving the Intelligence Committee offices is just a reminder that even if the president, even if Democrats are trying to pivot off of this issue, Issue, the investigating is going to continue and that's going to make it really difficult for the president and Democrats to work on anything else. There's a hope that perhaps they can work on lowering prescription drug prices or some kind of ambitious infrastructure spending plan, which both parties would see as a potential political victory ahead of next year. But if the president continues to see that Congress is doing its constitutional duty and investigating and holding accountable the executive branch, he may take it too personally and make it difficult for this end of Pennsylvania Avenue to work with the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue on anything else. Uh, Ed, we also want to ask you about President Trump's renewed attacks on Obamacare. Uh, he slammed the Affordable Care Act last night at that rally. Let's play a bit of what he said. Sure. And we've created new options to help Americans purchase affordable health plans all across state lines. You now have options you would have never had. The Democrats are pushing socialist, government-run health care that bans private health insurance for 180 million Americans. And I'm speaking now for the Republican Party. We will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. Always. Always. All right. Uh, so the president says he wants Republicans to be the party of health care, uh, Ed. But uh, the it seems to me, as most members of Congress are waiting to hear from the president as to what the alternative to the Affordable Care Act will be. They sure are, because they struggled themselves to come up with an, with an alternative to the Affordable Care Act. The Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell yesterday telling a reporter from Politico, I look forward to seeing what the president comes up with, which is a kind of subtle, non-threatening jab at the White House, because the Senate tried, remember, with the House to come up with something, and they couldn't. And was telling this week when the House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy was asked about this at his one of his press conferences that he kind of walked out of the room and didn't take any more questions on health care because he knows quite well that his party suffered at the polls last November over the issue of health care and the concerns that Republicans were going to chip away at protection for people with pre-existing conditions or other popular elements of the current health care law. So we'll see. Uh, the president is the one pushing for this, but lawmakers up here in the Republican Party certainly aren't eager to have another fight on health care, knowing it was much too tricky for them to sort out over the last three years. Indeed it was. Uh, Ed O'Keefe for us. Thank you, Ed. Take care, guys.